so many people as far as the, their attitude toward artists is in some ways artists are revered and in other ways we're 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 not you know i i remember uh, uh someone i met at our church one time and they, they heard that i was doing a drawing of somebody's house and they go, oh we had we had somebody do a drawing of our house one time oh but they charged too much and i said would you would you mind me asking uh, how much did you think was too much to charge? And he said, well, they charged $75. And I said, $75 is too much. And I said, do you have any idea how long they spent on drawing your house? And he said, oh no. And I said, what if they spent 10 hours? That's $7.50 an hour. Do you think that's decent? What if they spent longer than that? And <laughs> anyway, I think he eventually got my point. I'm Mike Thomas and I'm an artist who paints in oil on panel and, and canvas. I also work in colored pencils and all kinds of different things, even the computer. Uh, and I'm a graphic designer. We had four kids in my family and, and I had two older brothers and a younger sister. And my, even though I was pretty close in age with my next eldest brother, he was a lot bigger than me. So I think I was kind of the odd man out a lot of times, so I would just spend a lot of time on my own, and I, you know, I had a lot of building toys, and then at some point, pretty early on, I started sketching. I, I at that point, uh, there were cartoon characters on the cereal boxes mm -hmm. that I was copying, mm -hmm. and, and then the Sunday comics, and, and then, so probably because of, of that placement in the family, I probably did a lot more drawing uh, and then it turned out people started saying, well, he, he's all right at that, you know, so maybe, maybe we should encourage that. When I was in high school, I didn't take art classes. I thought, well, I'm, 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 I'm already a good artist, right? And then I, then it, then I started thinking, what am I going to do? And I, I started thinking, well, maybe I would like to be, at the time, I, the, the term was commercial artist, or, and I was thinking, how about an illustrator? something like that and uh, so that was junior year I started figuring that out and and uh, I thought some of these schools want a portfolio oops <laughs> so I went to the art teacher and once she got over uh, the fact that I had been a little turned up my nose about it uh, she and she, you know she was she was advanced in years but really a, a, a neat lady and uh, scolded me a little bit at first and then said okay we have a year we're gonna we're, I'm gonna expose you to as many things as possible and get you ready for this when I came to the U of I I said I want to I want to be an illustrator and they go oh you know what we just we just uh, we ended that program last year <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> here I am 500 miles away from, well, I, I, we had actually moved to Western Pennsylvania and I went through high school in Western Pennsylvania. So, but my, my parents had met at the U of I and they, they were like, oh, you should go to U of I. You know? So anyway, so I'm at the U of I 500 miles away and I'm, I'm, it's my first week. They've already dumped me in, in school and they say, oh, we don't do that anymore. But graphic design is pretty similar to that. So why don't you enroll in that? Or you can go up to Chicago Circle and become a medical illustrator and I was already homesick and I thought oh, I'm here now I don't want to go to Chicago next you know I'll, okay graphic design you know so <laughs> so I ended up doing that and um, but I always have this more of an illustrator sense to my design you know when when I design a logo it's probably coming more from a from an illustrator than from what we might consider a pure graphic designer a lot of people have a this view of, of artists as being messy and you know they don't care about um, paint spatters or whatever and uh, I've actually found that not to be helpful to, to the way I work. Uh, in fact I, I've surprised myself a few times because you, know, you do get paint on you but I just don't necessarily like to have paint all over me. I, I like to, it, since I am doing detail, I don't want stray paint to get off of 
me onto to a canvas, and I don't want it on me either, for that matter. And, you know, I don't have a big wardrobe budget, so <laughs> I do wear I do usually wear my radius clothes in case I do. I mean, I and I do get stuff on. I have a painting I did. Um, I actually got to take a course um, that was uh, like intermediate painting at the at the U of I, even though I was working full time. Uh, I got into this class with these. 20-something students, and uh, and I asked for permission to, to, to join that class, and the, the, the person who was working on his master's in, in painting at the time, and he said, yeah, okay, what do you want to get out of that? And I said, well, I feel like I'm in this plateau right now with my painting skills, and I just want to go to another level. I want to think more conceptually, if possible. I said, right now I'm being pretty literal and everything. And he says, I think I can help you with that. So he gave me the assignment. Where do you see yourself right now in, in, in our culture? And I've mentioned about even the divisive nature that we are in right now. So I thought, well, I, feel, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm in between all of these people and that I want to get along with both groups, and, but it's hard because they're, they're not listening. So my idea was um, to have these people in rowboats with megaphones. And these rowboats don't have paddles, and they're actually in the rapids, and they're about to go over the edge. But all they're doing is kind of yelling, but not listening, right? And then there's one figure, one lone figure that is in a kayak that is kayaking against the flow, but in between all of them. And I, I that's that's where I was supposed to be. You know, he says, "Where do you picture yourself?" And I, that's where I feel like because I'm hearing all these people yelling, but they're not listening to each other. And I and I I, I kind of feel like each side has something that's valuable to listen to and and I'm kind of feeling like I'm was stuck in the middle. Um, again, at the time um, that I was completing that painting, um, the Academy Award winning song that year was from a movie called Hustle and Flow. And I thought, so I thought you know, that's kind of what's going on here because if you look at the defini dictionary definition of hustle, it's you're trying to kind of push something, push push your agenda, maybe to somebody that doesn't want your agenda, right? And and here we are on the rapids, so so I named it hustle and flow because it was just again it was at that moment that was what was going on, and I was aware I was watching the Academy Awards, and I go, oh, that's it, that's that's what I'm going to name it. I did a, a, a piece that um, was for, I called it the Arts Festival because there were a few times where I um, saw things for, for an Arts Festival, the image that they used, and I was kind of disappointed that the signature image to me didn't say Arts Festival. So I thought, well, okay, if you're going to judge them, why don't you do your own? So I, so I, I, I did my own painting for, called Arts Festival, and, and, but I, what I did was I combined the whole idea. It's mostly a visual art time, but you also have a lot of music going on that weekend. And, and so what I decided to do is combine those. And uh, so my, my flute player and the end of her flute is a brush and my, my mandolin player, he, actually he's got a, a painter's palette on, on, on his mandolin and she's, she's using that uh, to, to, to paint. And then there's da dancers in the background. So I kind of try to combine the visual arts with the uh, the performance arts in that piece. So, so there, I combined both of my themes. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> when I was when I was a kid, I loved Alice Through the Looking Glass even more than Alice in Wonderland. And so, I again, I I, I started thinking, well, what would I do with that theme? And there was a a, a really good friend of mine had a daughter that was about the age of, of the Alice from the books. And um, I thought, would it be okay? So I asked the, the parents, uh, do you think Allison, and her name is Allison. <laughs> so, so we kind of joke, it was Allison in Wonderland. Um, but anyway, would, would she mind, uh, would it be okay if, if we did a photo sh shoot with, with her? And they, oh no, we, we'd love to do that. So I actually went online and, and got an Alice, uh, Alice dress. And I went to the mall and got some striped leotards, uh, and uh, and so one one weekend um, 
her mom brought her over and had her hair done just so and and we did a two-hour photo shoot with her and, and I've been I did a, a drawing that got accepted recently in uh, Colored Pencil Society of America uh, International Exhibit uh, from, from the, through the Looking Glass series. So I've done um, my own versions of Picasso's uh, old guitarist and I, I've always liked that painting but I also found it somewhat depressing and, and you know it's, it's his blue period and we understand that. Um, but since music is such a positive part of my family's life, I decided, well, I'm going to do my own. I'm going to do my young guitarist and have more of a positive spin, use brighter colors. Well, I have my first one was just a, a graphite drawing um, using a, a, a friend of, of ours that uh, posed for me. And I, I have, when I, when I have someone pose for me with an idea, I usually shoot back before, I, before our digital cameras, uh, I would shoot two or three rolls of film uh, for different things. Uh, now I, now I s still shoot a lot, but I don't have, have to process the film. And... You know, there are a lot of things you learn as you, as you in the process of, 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 of doing this work that, you know, there's so many times, especially, especially in oil paint, where I would spend a couple hours painting on something and, and uh, even within the first hour had it about where it needed to be and then say oh no but I need it just and then end up kind of ruining it you know and spending the next hour trying to get back to where I was that first hour well I don't make that mistake quite as often now so so from that standpoint I'm able to, to be maybe more more sensible about my, my, my work and, and uh, but I you know I hope I hope that I can continue to uh, maybe simplify my work. Lately though, I've been trying to do work that maybe more, more communicates a message rather than just be you know something that's beauty for beauty's sake or whatever and i think that's still valid but i i i like to think that i can do something beautiful but also try to communicate a message maybe even tell a story through through it and so uh, i think that's where i'm starting to shift a little bit First brush, sticking it in, the, you know, in, in the medium and, and get in that, that first stroke <laughs> is, is a little bit labored because you just, you're, you got to get loosened up to do it, you know, so, um, and that's what I've been finding is that you just have to kind of, you have to jump in even though, you know, you, there's a little bit of fear of failure, you know, and that kind of can hold you back, but, you know, what's, what's the famous, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step and, and you've got to take that first and second and third step so often to get to get to the point where you're actually able to, to feel relaxed and, and do what you what you need to do.